Thank you for listening to The Business Sphere. Don't forget to share this episode and subscribe. My guest today is the franchise matchmaker, Carrie Ann Golliver. She helps business owners take the leap into franchising. Thanks for joining me today, Carrie Ann. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you in the audience, John. So I know there's a lot going on in the world today. And I, just from the brief discussions we had, um, everyone is kind of getting some sort of symptoms and, you know, getting hit with, with this COVID thing. Um, actually, it ran through here in Canada. I had a lot of family members who got it the last couple of weeks. So I know it's happening and hopefully you're doing well and your family is over in, in Colorado where you're located. Um, how is everything going for you? Yes, you know, uh, yeah, it's hard to escape the COVID, right? I think, you know, I feel one positive thing is, you know, um, hopefully this will help with herd immunity. Um, I'm sure this is not going to be the end, but maybe hopefully we're getting closer <laughs> to the end. I think everyone is is pretty much over it. And, you know, I think thankfully we have some vaccines and who knows how well they're helping us. I mean, my husband and I, both, um, you know, were fully vaccinated with the booster and still ended up getting, thankfully, mild symptoms. But, you know, it's the world that we live in today. So it's a lot of uncertainty. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that, Carrie Ann. Oh. But for all the listeners that don't know who you are, if you don't mm -hmm. mind sharing with them uh, what you're known for today and how you became who you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it is a journey for sure. I mean, I don't think I would have ever imagined sitting in the chair that I am today, but you know, some of the most unexpected things that happen in your life are some of the most fantastic things that happen, right? So um, I am a top performing franchise consultant. People tell me every day, gosh, I didn't even know someone like you existed. Not such a great thing to hear every day as a business owner, but it is the truth. Um, you know, I am known as the franchise matchmaker, um, and there is a reason behind that title. So we can kind of rewind the tape a little bit and go back to um, prior to being a business owner. I spent a tremendous amount of time in my career in sales and marketing, and primarily with startup companies. I was always really um, attracted to the startups of company, bringing something to the market that nobody had seen before, um, being able to grow something and nurture it and then you know spread it out to the community. Unfortunately, with a lot of startups, there's a lot of starts and there's a lot of stops, right, John? So um, I didn't have all the authority, obviously, to make all the decisions in these startup organizations. And there was always kind of some Yahoo that would screw something up and then you'd go back to the office and the next day and there's this cryptic note that says, call us and now the business is stopping, right? And so it was a start, stop, start, stop. And it was rather frustrating for me. Um, so I was actually having dinner with uh, my sister and my brother-in-law and some friends and we were sitting around, you know, eating some great food, drinking some great wine, talking about, I don't know, you know, what, what we want to do when we grow up, which probably resonates with a lot of people tuning in today. Um, and we decided to start a business um, and we started a handyman business. Um, really, to be honest, it, it first initially started as a um, swamp cooler repair and, and maintenance company. Now, I don't know, John, are you familiar with swamp coolers? No, I'm not. Okay. So swamp cooler is often referred to as the poor man's air conditioning unit. Obviously, here in Colorado, a lot of people still today have swamp coolers in their commercial buildings and or their homes. Um, it cools the air with water. And okay. so for Colorado being so dry, we kind of like it because it adds a little bit of humidity into our very dry <laughs> environment. And um, my, my brother-in-law had been working at a restaurant and the restaurant had 
six different swamp coolers that he was always fixing and repairing. And actually uh, the house that they lived in at that time had a swamp cooler that they would have to maintain. And so my brother-in-law looked at all of us and said, I know we're going to have a swamp cooling repair and maintenance business. And we're going to call it Swamp Boy, literally. And obviously my first reaction was cut him off. He's had too much vino, right? <laughs> what is he talking about? And literally just kept talking about the idea. So it originally started as Swamp Boy, and literally we put an ad, this is, you know, back in the late nineties when people still put ads in the newspaper and it said, call Swamp Boy for your swamp cooler repair and fix it needs. And by golly, the phone started ringing, literally. And so we were taking the phone calls and we were sending my brother-in-law out to fix and repair. And what we recognized very shortly is a lot of people were, I mean, obviously my brother-in-law is very charismatic anyways, but they didn't want him to leave because they were like, oh my gosh, you actually showed up and on time and in a nice uniform and neatly dressed. And do you know anybody that can fix carpentry? Do you know anyone that can fix this window? Do you constant barrage of questions? And so every time he would come back to the basement, which is where we literally started the business. He'd say, I don't know what's going on out there, but nobody can seem to get a handyman to show up. I mean, all these people want us to do all these things. So then another kind of light bulb went off and we thought, wow, let's, let's, you know, start calling our community and asking them, do they have a handyman service? Would they like to have a handyman service? What would they be willing to pay for this service? And we literally then morphed the swamp cooling business into a full fledged handyman business. Um, so we provided a service and a solution for what our community said was not happening for them and um, grew it into a multi-million dollar business. Um, and, you know, literally nobody cared if we were successful, right? I mean, we were just trying to figure it out in the basement. Um, our, our bankers didn't care. Our lawyer didn't care. I mean, you know, our CPA didn't care if we were making money. I mean, it was just like, it was, it was a crazy time, but we, we never thought that it wouldn't work, I guess. Um, and so we never gave up on it, right? And so then we actually ended up franchising our business. We got introduced to the idea of franchising our business. And we thought, oh my gosh, how fantastic. We could duplicate our handyman business across the United States. We can help other people provide a wonderful service raise the bar up there what people were normally used to thinking of or visualizing when they thought of a handyman business, help them happily escape corporate America and build their own business. And so we ended up franchising our business in the latter part of 2001. We were the top rated national handyman franchise for a couple decades. And three years ago, Ace Hardware acquired us. So it was a very magical crazy ride. But I will tell you, going into business with family is challenging, very challenging. And I still came to the realization, just like I did with the startups, I don't have the authority to make all the decisions. Um, I need a louder voice. I really was craving something that was all mine. And so 13 years ago, I took the leap and started my own business as a franchise consultant. And so that's what I've been doing up to now is really guiding and um, helping really people navigate the waters and really understanding is franchise ownership even the right path for them? And if it is, then uh, we work together to really identify which franchises will be an ideal match for them. And we help them every step of the way understand how to properly do conduct a due diligence on this type of investment before they make any decisions or spend any money. That's amazing. And I love the, I guess, the journey aspect, but also just the genuineness of yourself, right? Like the authenticity, because what I found is growing up and it seemed like you 
didn't know what was going on early days. And you probably are still learning and navigating through the ropes, but you figured it out. You got yourself wet. You went in and started listening, asking, probing, figuring out which customers are paying and understanding what's going on in the marketplace before right. you went out and had this big dream, right? And dreams don't really mean much until you actually get revenue in a sustainable business. And so you learn early days that, you know, you have to refine your art, understand what's going on locally before you build a franchise within your own business, because then you can sustain the systems, processes, people, and understand how to scale and grow and have a successful business to replicate for other franchisees that want to be in your system to then eventually get acquired. So how long into your business journey, um, the, the home uh, contracting business before you started franchising and what was that pivotal moment and why? Yeah. So we, I mean, again, we, probably were really fully immersed in the handyman aspect of it, probably in like 1997. Okay. We did not start franchising until 2001, the latter part of 2001. And I think, you know, again, my sister extremely, I mean, anally detailed, right? So documenting everything, you know, it's in her DNA to create operational management uh, training videos. And so she was creating all of this as we were going along and, um, we, someone approached us and, and, you know, I really don't remember who exactly what kind of role they were, but somebody on the outside said, you know, you guys should think about franchising this business. And I think they mentioned that to us because, you know, I mentioned my brother-in-law came from the restaurant industry he um, was having employees, uh, past employees, contact him and say, "What are you? What are you doing over there? We're getting burnt out being, you know, yeah. being at the at the bar or being at the restaurant." Um, and what we did was we ended up carving out multiple territories for these employees and saying, "Okay, here's your territory in Boulder, Colorado, and here's all the stuff that you need." go start hiring craftsmen. And so we were kind of like testing the model without even, I guess, actually realizing that we were testing the model, right? And then we ended up opening up other territories. And so we had Colorado pretty much covered. And that's, I think, why someone on the outside said, you obviously have a proven model. You've been successful duplicating this a number of times. You should think about franchising your business. And we were like, whoa, what's all that about? So we learned about franchising. Then we obviously had to, you know, get an attorney that specializes in franchising, help us set everything up correctly, um, you know, learned about how this works. And then, you know, in the latter part of 2001, we're like, woohoo, we're a rocket ship. We're going to, we're now going to franchise our business. And, and that's really, I think, what happened. And we wanted, again, to really raise the bar um, and change the vision. The, the service based industry, unfortunately, still, the, the bar is pathetically low out there. And what we realized was we didn't have to do a lot you know, we, to move the earth underneath uh, our customer's feet, I mean, show up on time, answer your phone, um, you know, be neatly dressed in a professional uniform. We found out while we were running the model, really all the things that would set us apart and make us unique from what was already out there. I mean, again, going back to the nineties, um, you know, there was no such thing as a no call list. So we had the ability to call anybody and everybody that we wanted and ask them these questions, which, again, I think any good business solves a problem. That's amazing. Yeah. And so or early days, um, mm -hmm. how did how was it? Because I know you you started advertising, you started getting some clients and then they referred. Did you specialize in some sort of general contracting? Because co contractors do everything from plumbing, roofing, floors, windows, you know, home renovations, additions. Was there any specialties that you really harvest in on or was it more a general contractor? 
Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting question. And it does vary depending upon a territory, right? Okay, so yeah. specifically California, you have to get a contractor's license. I mean, so every state has its own rules and regulations depending on what you can and can't do. Mostly you can't do plumbing, you can't do electrical, you can't do HVAC unless you're certified and have those licenses. What you can do is there's workarounds. So you can hire a licensed employee and work underneath their license. Um, sometimes people go, well, that's, you know, handcuffing me to that person who has a license. And when they're gone, then I'm going to be, you know, um, out of luck. Well, that's not the case. The case is, is that your state is going to provide you a particular timeline to be grandfathered under that license until you can find somebody else to work under their license. So it really does vary based on, and you know, we had we have Canadian franchise owners. In fact, I'll never forget when we had, I mean, we had, goodness gracious, John, the ugliest, um, most pathetic website back in the day, right? I mean, I can remember it had like blue tile, like that reminded me of like a bathroom tile. I mean, we didn't know what we were doing, right? But we were just trying to figure it out. And these people in Ireland found our website and called us. And Owen said, okay, we are very interested in your franchise. And we found you on the internet. And we're looking to do something. And we're going to come out and visit you in the summertime because they do things right and take like the summer off and don't work. Uh -huh. like, and unlike other people do. And they came and nearly drunk us all under the table. I mean, they were here for two weeks. We loved spending time with Owen and his wife. Um, they were a young couple um, and we were like, wow, they're all the way in Ireland. Like, how are we gonna support someone all the way in Ireland? And how are we gonna make sure our model works in Ireland? We were able to figure it out, right, obviously. But um, we were, you know, we were just trying to figure out how to grow and how to make things duplicatable. And then we learned that franchising is all about following a process. Um, the operations, the technology, the training, the recruiting, the support, it's what you're buying is you're buying a business in a box. And so we had to create that box, right? And we had a lot of trial and error. But then when 2001 came, uh, we were like, okay, we've got the box as true as it can be. And we've duplicated it in the multiple territories in Colorado. And now it's time to go national, baby. Let's go, right? Let's let's conquer the world one craftsman at a time. <laughs> and so what I what we realized was, you know, we need to be different. Um, we need to make sure that we stand out. When we were calling the people asking them, do you want a handyman service? What would you be willing to pay? What we realized was people wanted a one-stop shop. They did not want to have to pay a carpenter this, a plumber this, you know, they wanted a, you know, solution for their one-stop shopping. And so what we did was we figured out our pricing so that we actually ended up cheaper than if somebody hired multiple services to come in and we worked our pricing that way. So one hour minimum, um, we can do all of these things depending on, you know, what the territory was and we could legally do. Um, and, and I think that's what customers really appreciated was full transparency. That's amazing. And this is just from starting in one state, right? In Colorado. Starting in the basement Miami. of my basement. sister and my brother's house. Yeah. This is amazing. So a uh, question, cause I'm very ultra curious, right. On, you know, after dominating your local area to then coming up with this franchise model and then slowly, maybe you had this marketing plan of going to franchise shows, trying to cultivate this yeah. vision and yeah. cultivate people to be under this franchise. Um, and then the, the entire model of the fee royalties and how much co-op dollar, all that sis, because you already have all the systems in place. Mm -hmm. What, what was your goal at that time, right? Because like you mentioned, you wanted to dominate the world, but really you wanted to help other people become more independent and get off their, you know, because everyone wants, their dream is to be a business owner. 
everyone seems to want to have a better lifestyle, improve their financial situation based on, you know, if they are working in a restaurant or a handyman, they wanted to be that owner, right? Where they are in control. What did you find in terms of like the type of people who bought into your franchise and that transformation, I'm sure is so rewarding, I would say, because you seeing other just, you know, people that are hardworking people now be able to support their community, take care of their family, give more, right? Like, I think yeah. that's what, what it's all about being a business owner. Oh yeah. I mean, it's living the, living the American dream, really. I mean, living the dream, you know, I, there was a lot of learning obviously. Right. Um, and with a franchise, you know, you have to get approved. You can't just buy Dunkin' Donuts because you like donuts, right? You have to go through a series of sessions of learning about the business and you have to qualify before you can even learn about the business. And, you know, they have to believe really, if you think about franchising and I, I tell my candidates this every day that I work with them is I use the analogy of dating. So we're going to have you go on some blind dates with some franchise companies. We match you up with, you're going to have some courtship and you may or may not get to the altar. And I say that kind of jokingly, but it is true. I mean, your franchise partner is literally your business partner every day, all the time. Their job is to make sure you get to having a world series. Uh, they're dependent upon you being successful. And it's meant to be a business marriage, a profitable, hopefully business marriage, right? So we had some learning that we had to do. I mean, we've never, you know, offered a franchise before in our lives. And we sold to some people that were not a good fit. And what we quickly realized were the people that are not a good fit are the people that like to do the tinkering around in the garage and like to do, you know, the hammer and the nails. That's not who we want buying our franchise because they're going to spend all their time out in the field and not growing a business. So we really realized rather quickly that we need heads on, not hands on when it comes to an owner, right? I mean, obviously um, we need someone who understands P&Ls and, and can manage and motivate and, you know, build a winning culture team underneath them because we don't want them out there working on the projects because then there's nobody building the business. We love uh, husband and wife teams, right? Um, and so we had a lot of those. Now I'll tell you also, well, sometimes we felt like a marriage counselor because not every husband and wife should be working together. I mean, let's face it, marriage is work also. And then having to run a business with your spouse um, adds a whole nother level of, you know what, right, um, to the relationship. So there were times where, you know, it wasn't a good fit for husband and wives to grow the business together. So we learned by, you know, how you're going to learn by trial and error. I mean, we, but our number one goal was we want people to be successful and we also want to help them when they exit. Um, you know, we need them to know and define what their exit strategy is before they ever even get into our business so that we can help them get to that exit strategy, right? So one, uh, you know, example is we had um, an amazing female who came from um, sales, software sales, ended up um, getting introduced to our business from a franchise consultant, um, which is the role that I play today and saw a good match and she joined um, the handyman system. And, you know, her goal was to exit in seven years, to run that business up the flagpole at a certain sales number and then exit and retire. And it took her nine years to find the right buyer for the right amount that she was looking for, but she was still able to exit um, just two years, you know, longer than her goal. And here's an interesting story. So I brought her into our handyman business. She flourished in our handyman business. She sold for an amazing multiplier nine years down the road. She, she you know, ran an amazing business, obviously. Um, 
she took a you know personal sabbatical and in 2016 she uh, came back to me and said i know you're now a consultant help me buy a new business i'm bored i can only play tennis so many so many hours out of the day I'm surrounded by people that are not working, which I think is not a positive thing for me. And I'm ready to have another franchise. So I helped her evaluate some different franchises and um, she moved forward with multi-territories with another franchise and has, has had huge success with that. So it's kind of interesting how it all came you know, for full circle. And, and I think that's so important to realize that you're helping someone achieve their dream and it's going to get paid back mul- multiple times forward, right? Not just for yourself, but it's so rewarding to see that they appreciate what you've done and they're going to come back to you, right? And I've seen this a lot in businesses, right? Where it's word of mouth referrals <clears throat> and they rely on that to scale their business, right? And I'm sure you did that really well by listening and asking and taking care of your clients. So now you're do- just doing it on a larger level in franchises, mm-hmm. right? Where yeah. the, the ticket dollar um, item sale is not, you know, two or three digits. It's maybe multiples of six or seven digits, right? So it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to ask, so Back in 2001, you started the franchise. 2017, that's when you sold. How did it go? Like those 16 years, I'm sure roller coaster, first couple of years, getting the wrong type of people in. But when did it start refining and start taking its toll? Like when did you start seeing the rapid growth before selling it? Yeah, I mean, our number one goal was not to grow too fast. Yes. Um, because if you grow too fast, you know, you're not going to be able to keep up with the support. And so that was really true to us is that we did not want to grow at a faster pace that we could support. And so, you know, um, I would say 2008 was an incredible year for us. And if we look back 2008, wasn't so great for most, most companies, but I think that's really 2006, 2007, we were growing building. And then 2008, we just kind of blew up. I mean, we grew like 272% with 0% failure. I mean, it was insane. I mean, it was just like amazing. So, um, and then it just kept building. Now, you know, I remember left 13 years ago from the family business, even though I was still a board member, and involved and had a voice. Again, I was craving, I need something that's all mine, that I can call my own, that I can call all the shots because my rub was, you know, again, going into business with family is challenging. You know, you're, you're sitting at a holiday dinner, passing the mashed potatoes, talking about business. I mean, the lines get blurred and you lose your family in there. And so I felt like my family was way more important than any business. And so I kind of, you know, um, took, you know, the back door and exited on the right um, to be a consultant because what I learned on the journey and I sold, you know, the majority of the franchises, I was the sales department when we were franchising our handyman business. So I was working one-on-one very closely and building relationships with these people who we may or may not allow into our franchise. And what I realized was there's so many people out there that that are gravitating towards franchise ownership to take control, to be their own boss, to build something that's tangible, to create a legacy, to increase their overall wealth. Um, to involve their children. We had, you know, we have owners that when they purchased years ago, decades ago, they've now passed on the business ownership to their sons and daughters, which is really cool, right? Um, Who are doing a fantastic job continuing the journey. But the problem is, is too many people leave it up to Google or friends or family to tell them which franchise to buy. And they don't have a great success if they're not matched up properly. So that was my mission. And from what I learned from the journey of of actually franchising our family business is that 
there is a void out there and I, I can help lots of people really understand, you know, which, which, um, matches would be better for them where they could possibly yield a much higher success rate than, you know, this is a, this is, this is not just a decision. This is a life changing thing that they're, that people are doing when they're going into business. Right. And not everyone should be a business owner, by the way. No, this is great. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Ann, I mean, just giving a lot of tidbits on life perspective, right? Like you've gone through small business ownership, scaling to statewide, to then franchising, to then exiting. Now you can see from different personality, different perspectives, different stages of people's lives and when moments are so important because people go through a lot of changes throughout their life from work, life balance, to career motivations, to then family obligations. You have to be in it fully vested to really understand like why, why you're doing this. So that goal session that you mentioned is so important, the clarity on what your ultimate goal and timeline is. Yeah, what yeah. do you want to get out of it? If it's just money, it's probably not for you. It has to be more than that. And that's why I always ask why. Why do you want me to work to help you grow your online exactly. business or whatever? And yeah. we, like why, for me, I want to have a vested interest in you supporting your bigger mission, right? And it has to be a good fit in terms of values and cultures. It has to make sure that you, you're doing something that's moving the needle for their livelihood, their family, or whatever that bigger mission is, right? To creating that freedom, whatever that may be your lifestyle. Right. So it seems like now that you've found your own business, and I'm going to get into like, what do you currently do? And you know, it's been almost 10 years now, right? Like nine years. That's when I started my own agency, right? Yeah. And I found like my staff, my, my, my clients are great, but the people that are in place, they're my family, right? It's very similar to you and your franchisees, right? Like they were families to you because yeah. you need to put them into the system, but train them having calls, one-on-one -on -one sessions to make sure that their revenue grows, their profit grows, and they have a sustainable business model to continue growing at whatever their goals are. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it seems like you kind of found something. What, so what triggered you to kind of move away from that family to kind of do your independent and how has it been? Yeah. Well, I wanted to take the leap, right? So I wanted something that I could say, this is mine. Yeah. Um, I didn't want it to be connected to the family. Right. I didn't want to, um, again, the challenges of working with family, you know, um, there's plenty of them, right? And so I chose family first. Um, and then I said, you know, in order to keep my family um, where I want them to be, then I need to take the leap and go somewhere else. Um, and so I took the knowledge and everything that I had learned and experienced with our family business and apply that to coaching and guiding people who are thinking about possibly, um, you know, investing and making this life-changing decision. And so it's, it's a matter of, you know, I think the credibility of where I'm coming from um, is a reason why a lot of people work with me, right? Now, there are people that reach out and say, hey, help us franchise our family business. No, I don't do that, right? That's not what I'm working on. That's that's not my mission. My mission is delivering, you know, education and guidance to people who are seriously interested in, you know, evaluating uh, a franchise and going on a journey of education. It is a journey. It's a, it's a three-month process. It's not like, you know, you're just going to look at a couple options and, and pick one, right? So um, there's a lot that goes into that. And I think, um, you know, my mission is just helping, helping people. I love helping people. I love helping people realize there's so many different other options out there than just working for the man, right? Um, and 
you know, when you find success in business ownership, it's like the golden handcuffs. <laughs> it's going to ruin you because you're never going to want to go and work for anybody else ever again. So people that are tired of renting out their time and their talent and making a bunch of personal sacrifices, building wealth for a company that doesn't really care about them, I think people are tired of that. And they need to know that there's other options out there. Um, and franchising is, I feel, an amazing investment for the right person. It's not always the perfect fit for everyone, though. And, and this is a great uh, role that you're in because not only do you have experience and good positive track record, but you love helping others, right? And that's a personal touch. And I love that you're sharing this because this is what consultants do. And this is where headhunters, recruiters do for finding placements of job choices yes. for their career. But for you, you want people that are looking at, you know, transforming their lives really for a business ownership and business ownership from working for the man to business ownership is a huge leap. And it's not for everyone. And how many people are successful is dependent on how determined they are and dependent on how much willpower and aspirations of everything else. There's so many intangible skill sets, I'm sure. And it's hard because even myself, when I started my own journey in 2013, that's when I started my agency. Right. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was working corporate. I was actually at Yellow Pages for five years. Oh, nice. In sales, corporate, right? And I work with thousands of business owners. But one thing that really resonated with me was I wanted to be like them. They stood for community. They stood for family. They stood for giving, listening, helping, sharing, like all the good traits, values that really went into small business ownership. And I can tell it's very similar on what you're doing and what I'm kind of doing. And the type of clients I only want to resonate with are SMBs that have a solid business that want to work with a solid digital agency that focuses only on SEO. Like I know exactly who I want to work with. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have kind of figured out after a lot of years of trial and tribulations, right? Like it seems yeah. like you're so fully vested. And I love hearing that. Um, so how has business been like what, what's going on in your world now that you kind of transition away from family to your own uh, consulting business yeah. and what's up, like what, what's going on for the next five, 10 years? Like, where do you want to be um, unless this is it? Like, is well, this yeah, I, I can't imagine doing anything else, honestly. I mean, I truly feel like I am uh, changing lives, really. I mean, you know, I had a gentleman that I placed in a franchise five years ago, and he called me three months before the end of 2021 to tell me he had an amazing exit. He sold his business to private equity. He sold his franchise to private equity. So, um, you know, I mean, these are, you know, stories and things that happen, you know, getting um, a couple where the wife emails me and says, you know, our, my husband has never been happier. He doesn't have as much stress. You literally saved our marriage. We're so excited. I mean, there's the you know, money can't buy that. Right. I mean, that is those kinds of things fill me up instead of drain me. Right. So when I was working for startup companies, it was a drain. It was a pull. It was a drag every day. And so now I've just chosen to do something that fills me. And I will tell you, even, even if I work with someone and because we don't know where it's going to go, but we won't know until we get going on the journey, even if their decision at the end of the journey is, no, I'm not going to be a franchise owner or no, this is not the right direction. I'm like, hallelujah. Yay. This is still a victory, right? Because now we can mark this off of your list. And know that this is not the right path for you. And it does happen. I mean, not everybody is a fit for a franchise. So, you know, I business is amazing. I feel so incredibly blessed um, that I get to do what I get to do and make a just um, impactful change in people's lives. Um, I have franchise owners that I placed years ago that um, I still get Christmas cards from. Every year, I mean, we stay connected. 
I've had, you know, placements that I found them a business. They got into business. They were successful and they're like, they call back, Hey, I'm ready for my second franchise, Carrie Ann. This is now what I'm looking for. Right. So I've helped them with their second or their third business, um, which is, you know, just amazing to see that they just, it's so fun to see what they grow and build. Um, and, you know, I'm going to be going to a grand opening uh, with a couple that I uh, placed for their business that's coming up soon. And I'm going to fly out and go to their grand opening. I mean, amazing. I mean, it's just like, I want to be there for the ribbon cutting, you know, and, and just amazing to play this part. And, you know, our services are complimentary. No one pays me for my services. It's free. Uh, it's just like the recruiter, or the real estate model. Um, and, but, you know, we're coming armed with 20 plus years of small business and franchising experience. And uh, we're very particular in the franchises that we represent. You know, we don't just represent any brand. Um, and we're, even if they decide franchising or business ownership is not a good fit for them, either at that time or ever, they don't walk away empty handed. They now have clear vision of what they really need and maybe some other paths that are better for them. And if they do decide to revisit business ownership down the road, what they also are armed with and walk away with is knowing how to conduct a proper due diligence on a business before they buy it. So what do they got to lose? Right? No, oh, that's amazing. I, I love your energy. I love the why of what you're doing, the impact that you're making in people's lives, transformation that's happening. And you have complete clarity on what makes you happy. And ultimately, that's what a lot of people are missing and lacking yes. in today's world. Like, they're not clear on what they want. And, you know, you have to kind of come to yourself. Like, when, when they come to you, they should have an idea. They might not have a real bigger picture idea, but some sort of idea of where they want to be, like goals and vision, right? Like five, 10 years down the line, or even right. generationally, because right. some of the stuff you can't help them with, <laughs> right? right? But really, you said it earlier, it's all about the why. You have to know your why, yes. and then everything else will fall into place. But if you don't know your why, you're not going to get anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. No, this is great. So Carrie Ann, what's the best way people can reach out to you, check mm -hmm. you out, uh, see, even do a consult if you offer that, um, yeah. if you don't mind sharing? Yeah. So um, my website is franchise hyphen. So that's the dash logic.com. So franchise hyphen logic.com. I have got four, five, De free downloadable digital assets. Um, help yourself to any of those. I have videos, I have case studies, I have testimonials. So you can read about people's results working with me. Um, there is a link right on the homepage where you can just easily click on that and book just an initial 10, 15 minute call. Let's, let's have a chat. Let's talk about what's going on and what's draining you and see if it makes sense for us to work together. Um, one specific digital asset is diversification through franchise ownership. Um, and I put this together because not only do I work with people who are career transitional, you know, um, or, um, you know, just um, wanting to escape corporate America, but I do also work with a lot of investors um, who their why is they have got to find some investments to put their money to get it continually working with them, right? So, uh, or for them. So um, the diversification through franchise ownership um, really helps people understand, um, you know, how powerful a franchise investment can be while they have other interests going. So a lot of people don't realize, you know, yes, years ago, if you were looking at a franchise, you have to be okay cutting the cord with corporate America and jumping in with both feet, but that's not the case um, today. So investors, private equity firms buy franchises. I mean, it's, it's good for a private equity firm. It's got to be good for all of you that are watching this, right? Um, but we help you do a self-discovery 
to really look at, can you afford a franchise? Is this the right time to buy a franchise for you? Is franchising even right for you? What are your skill sets and strengths um, that are just a natural in your DNA? And we can apply those to a very broad scope of industries um, and match you up and have you learn about some opportunities out there. But the website's the easiest way. Just grab 15 minutes on the calendar. We can have a conversation, download any of my free digital assets, watch my videos, read the case studies and testimonials. Um, this is serious stuff. I mean, we represent real businesses that you see out there every day. And again, this is, you know, a commitment to a journey of, of three months. Amazing. Um, is there uh, boundaries? Is there specific locations that you represent? Is it only USA, Canada, North America, or is it Europe and global? Yeah, we do have some franchise companies that are in multiple continents and countries. But um, for the most part, who we work with is anyone in the United States and in Canada. Amazing. Um, if they're in these areas and they want to eventually expand and grow into Australia or wherever, Spain, Japan, we have lots of franchise companies that are willing to go in that direction. Um, you know, it's important to understand that a franchisor that, that franchises, franchising is highly regulated by the Federal Trade Commission, the government. So franchisors have to pay lots of dollars and have to register and have to create a disclosure document that's a legal document um, in whatever country they're going to be offering their franchises. And so not every franchise goes outside of the U.S. You know, to franchise outside a different country, like when we went to Ireland, it was $100,000 that we had to pay to now be able to award franchises in a different country, right? So just understand that not every franchisor is going to go, you know, outside other countries, but the ones that have, they have everything put into place and all legalized. Um, and so we can help identify those for that particular person. Amazing, Carrie Ann. I really yeah. enjoyed our discussion. Me um, as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes. Um, I know there was a lot of insight. Check out for all the listeners, check out the website franchise-logic.com. Um, she's great, Carrie Ann. I'm sure she's willing to answer any of your questions. Um, but take a look at the website, let her know, reach out to her. Um, but I do want to thank you, Carrie Ann, for all the valuable uh, information that you shared with us today. And we'll be in touch. Thank okay, you. thank you so much, John.